Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the South Castephen series, 83 parishes surrounding the town of Grantham in southern Lincolnshire, which are full of history. Let's check one of them out. Welcome back to South Castephen, everybody. And as you can see, it's raining. To be honest with you, this is actually a bit of a welcome relief because as I'm sure you all know, in early September, the UK broke its heat records for the month. And it's actually quite nice to be walking around when it's not like Satan's backside. <laughs> okay, so where are we? We're in a place which is very close to Newark. And even though the Newark and Sherwood series is now finished, there are some places over the border into Lincolnshire which still have a Newark connection. This is one of them. This is Claypole. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Here we go again with another run in South Castephen. Welcome to Claypole, a small village just off the A1, close to the Lincolnshire-Nottinghamshire border, situated four miles to the southeast of Newark-on-Trent. Originally a linear settlement, Claypole has developed slowly over the centuries and sports a modern population of just over 1,000 people. Its name is Old English, deriving from the words clegg and pole, literally meaning clay or clay pool. It was recorded in the Doomsday Book as Claypole, and at that time it had a church, a priest and a mill. Fast forward to the late 19th century and Claypole was the birthplace of a man who would make millions in the Great Lakes of North America, Harry Colby. Despite Moving away, he never forgot his Lincolnshire roots. He died in 1929, and at the request of his sister, he was buried right here in Claypole. We'll see his grave on our walk around. Many of Claypole's landmarks and a couple of streets bear a relevance to him, and we'll find all of those too. Claypole is situated on the East Coast Main Line and has three railway crossings, the most of any village in South Castephen. It once had a station too, but now no trace remains. It's got a shop, a village hall, a school, some fine old buildings, and wouldn't look out of place in Nottinghamshire. I mean, after all, it does share a massive border with that county. Let's get walking and check it all out. We begin this rain-soaked walk around Claypool at its church. This is a Grade 1 listed building dedicated to St Peter. Historical records suggest that this was once dedicated to St Peter and St Paul. Whatever the case, it dates mainly from 1300. Prior to this, there was a Saxon church in Claypool, probably built of wood. St Peter's is stone and has lots of notable marks. There are over 300 in total, including mason's marks, circles, letters and dates, faces, crosses and even a medieval game. Some of them have existed for over 300 years. Arguably though, it's St Peter's churchyard, which is much more interesting. This is the grave of Harry Colby, who died of natural causes in London in 1929. He was born in Claypole in 1865. A lot of Claypole history revolves around him and his family. He was a businessman and he was known as the Tsar of the Great Lakes. 
I like finding graves like that one of Harry Colby because they tell a story about the place that you're in. And speaking of the place that you're in, it's not just all about this church and who you can find buried in its churchyard. Claypole has a lot more. Let's go for a walk around and see what it has to offer. So just who was Harry Coolby? Well, he was the fourth of seven children and the fourth of four sons. His father was a farmer and in his early life, Harry Coolby worked on his father's farm. He was a voracious reader and during his youth, he read about the Great Lakes in North America and became fascinated by them. He would embark on a crazy journey to them, which involved a ridiculously long walk from New York City to Cleveland, Ohio in 1884. Once there, Colby did all he could to learn about Great Lakes shipping. He was quick to identify ways in which to cut costs and was eventually hired by Pickens Mather, who shipped iron ore from the mines in Minnesota to steel mills. He would go on to be the president of the company and would later manage the Pittsburgh Steamship Company. Soon he'd amassed a small fortune and upon his death in 1929, a lot of the money he'd earned was left to Claypole, the village he returned to many times throughout his life. On Main Street we find an old chapel. This was for the Primitive Methodists until it was sold to the Wesleyans in 1921. There are many landmarks which pertain to Harry Colby around Claypole, but this western end of the village doesn't have any. This is the oldest part of Claypole and you can tell that just by looking at the gorgeous characterful properties that line this road. Chapel Lane is where we'll find the first building that was used by the Wesleyan Methodists before they bought the other one. This was built in 1835, a fact confirmed by the date stone above its door. Both former chapels are now residential properties. Speaking of houses, Claypole is a good little commuter village, seeing as it's located close to the A1 and to Newark. This is Wellfen Lane, wholly residential with mainly semi-detached housing, and it leads to another similar street, Barnby Lane. This runs towards Barnby and the Willows. It becomes a farm track, but thanks to the River Witham, it never actually reaches Barnby. Most of Claypole's new developments can be found at one end of this road, whilst the other looks distinctively like Nottinghamshire. So although Claypole is a Lincolnshire village, it's right on the border with Nottinghamshire and quite frankly, it wouldn't look out of place in Nottinghamshire, would it? Let's be honest, because how many times have we seen Nottinghamshire villages that look very similar to this? We're now going to walk down Main Street for a short stretch to find a school. Now we're at the village hall and this building's very existence is down to Claypole's own Harry Colby, whose funds built it. It was erected in 1923 and earlier this year it celebrated its 100th anniversary, an event that was well attended by the locals. It's a beautiful arts and crafts style building with vintage features and ahead of its centenary year it underwent a full restoration. This tablet on the wall is a war memorial. There's also a 14th century cross at St. Peter's Church, which is used as a second one. The hall is signed up to Film Bank Media to run a cinema club, which you can join for £10. A family of four's membership is 25. Until the early 20th century, there was a range of retail premises in the village. These are now much reduced in number. One that remains is Shine, which is a hairdresser's. The village hall also has the Side House, an award-winning coffee shop. Next I came to a bus shelter where there was a parish notice board. We've now covered seven in South Castephen, 76 left. Now to go up School Lane as we make for the educational establishment I was talking about a few moments ago. The school is another thing that owes its existence to Harry Colby. Before it existed, children had to travel to Newark or Grantham. Claypole C of E is a much more modern building than the one Colby funded. It was originally a chance to share hall. Now next to the school you can see there's a park. There's some tennis courts over there 
and there's a footpath which runs alongside those tennis courts and we're going to follow that in a moment. Not until though we've checked out this building right here because this is one of Claypool's biggest and most historic buildings. That's next. This big white house is the old rectory, which was originally built as a small country house. It's Grade 2 listed. It dates back to the 17th century, but it's had plenty of additions since then. It's got nine bedrooms and it's worth almost £800,000. After an about turn, we're off next through Claypole Community Park, which will provide us with a link to Osterfen Lane. This has many sporting facilities and a big playground for local children. Claypole's football and cricket teams are based here. The field was created in the 1960s. Prior to this, the land was used as a site for allotments and post-war prefabs. Once through the park, you're out onto Osterfen Lane, and here we have one of Claypole's three level crossings. Yes, once again, the channel's favourite railway line is back. This is the East Coast Main Line and how I've missed seeing it. With three level crossings, Claypole has the most of any village in South Kistevan. The name Oster, by the way, is Germanic. It literally means East or to the East. That makes this East Fen Lane. We're now back to Main Street and we're looking towards the Village Hall. Let's start making our way back to the start. So now we're going to start our walk back through the village with the rest of Main Street, but there's a few other bits and bobs to see, including the village shop, which is towards the end of this route. Don't know what else there is, to be honest with you, but we'll soon find out. Main Street, the road through Claypole to the A1, is fairly straight, although it does have a few shallow bends, like this one. Next we pass Coolby Close. I don't think I need to explain the name of this one really, do I? Next it's the pub, the Five Bells. This is a popular and very well supported local, which holds an annual beer festival in June. It also has four ensuite rooms available. Barley Court nearby is perhaps a sideways reference to milling. For over 900 years, flax and corn were both milled here. Now we've turned off Main Street onto Doddington Lane, which runs south to Dry Doddington and passes a butcher's shop on the way. Once a shop of a different kind, Doncaster's butchers have been here since 2010. Opposite this is Wycliffe Park. This is named after the American town which Harry Colby served as the very first mayor of after its incorporation, Wycliffe, Ohio. A path off it brings us to Back Lane where there's some more newish houses and a right turn takes us back to Main Street. Our final landmark was originally a butcher's before becoming a co-op and then the quaint little Claypole Village store. And there you go, we've completed the circuit of the village. From here it's a simple walk back to the church where we began. But I wouldn't be talking to the camera right now if I was just going to leave it here, oh no. Because the East Coast Main Line has something else we need to talk about. The site of Claypole's former station. Let's go and find it. As we drive towards the next one, we have to cross the East Coast Main Line. That's the perfect opportunity to talk about the site of Claypole's former railway station. No trace now remains of it, but I can at least show you where it was. It was in operation for just over a century. The station was sited close to this private rail yard, close to the present East Coast Main Line level crossing on Main Street. Claypole was opened by the Great Northern Railway in August 1852 and closed to passengers in September 1957. Claypole's signal box remains an iconic landmark though. This was built in the 1970s, replacing an original Great Northern Railway one. 
This controls all three crossings in Claypole and the ones at Boulderton via CCTV, and it can also control Carlton Crossing if needed too. Trains still flash past the former station's site of course, but now Claypole's nearest rail connection is Newark Northgate. I couldn't resist one final train shot. There's something quite appealing about one of these rushing past you at well over 100 miles an hour. And that's your lot for Claypole. What a fabulous little village, and how great it is that the man who moved away to make his fortune in America never forgot his Lincolnshire roots. Claypole owes a lot to Harry Corby. Join me next week for another South Stephen Parish, one with a big haul. Latest, folks. for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out